Are there a lot of books I'm supposed to be reading? Yes. Am I ditching them all to read Narnia again? Also, yes. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel if you've seen us before. If you're new, I'm Abby, and today we are starting a brand new reading vlog of one of my favorite series of all time. Not even one of. My favorite series of all time. If you're new here, you might not know, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis is my favorite series, and I've read them so many times. So many times you can kind of tell because like the spines are a little bit cracked on my paperbacks. I always go back to them when I need to feel cozy and I just want something that I know is going to make me smile. Today, Tuesday, the start of the reading vlog, I am exactly eight days away from my birthday, thus making it my birthday week. I decided I wanted to do something kind of special and fun and read these bad boys again. So there's seven books, which means that one per day for the week and I should be good to go in order to give myself a little extra cushion I'm giving myself eight days to read the seven books of the series and because I wanted to give myself an extra fun challenge I'm actually going to be reading these in an order I've never read them in before <sighs> so if you're new to the Narnia fandom or if you've never read them and you don't know there is a bit of controversy about the order in which you should read the books um, this is because they were published originally in a different order than they are normally marketed now. So now they are marketed in chronological order which goes The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Horse and His Boy, these are slippery little boogers, excuse my struggle, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, and the Last Battle, and that is chronological order, and that is the order that I have always preferred to read them in since the first time I read them. The first time I read them, I read them all higgledy-piggledy. I don't even remember the order. I do know Lion was my first, but after that I feel like I kind of just read them however I felt like, but I'm a fan of the chronological order. That's usually the way that I like it to go, just because in most series I prefer to read them chronologically if that's possible. It just helps me keep track of a timeline, but this week I'm going to be reading them in publication order, which is slightly different, and a lot of people swear by it, and I'm really curious what I'm gonna think. I have a hypothesis, but I'll share that with you in a second. So, publication order runs like this. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, Voyage to the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, The Horse and His Boy, The Magician's Nephew, and The Last Battle is on the floor. <laughs> last Battle is the last book, either way you read them, which makes sense because it's, you know, the conclusion of everything. Um, so, I've never read them in this order, I don't think. I do remember the first time I ever read them, my dad read them, read Lion aloud to a bunch of us church kids, and it was just a magical time. We had like activities and all sorts of fun things that went along with it, and this was the first introduction I had to Narnia, and I fell madly in love. Here's my hypothesis and my opinions. So my hypothesis is that when I finish reading them in publication order, I'm going to recommend reading them the first time in publication order. I love chronological order, I think it's wonderful, but I understand, in theory, right now, it would be helpful to read The Magician's Nephew after you've read at least The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, because The Magician's Nephew is a prequel to that, and like a lot of things that happen in The Magician's Nephew might not be as cool and clever if you haven't already read Lion. You know what I mean? So my other opinion about this is that this saves my three favorite books till the end, which is a little sad. I do love the whole series, like I said it's my favorite series of all time, but my three favorites are Magician's Nephew, The Last Battle, and The Horse and His Boy. So I'm interested to see how this goes, reading through the Pevensey Saga first, and then kind of getting through the rest of the series. So if you're new to Narnia, if you've never read it before, I will be trying to avoid spoilers, but I can't give promises, um, although they've been around for 70 years, so. I find a lot of people have at least read Lion if they haven't read a lot of the others, because this one is taught in a lot of schools, which I understand. Um, so let's jump on in. Let's get started. It's my birthday and I'm gonna spend some time with my Narnian friends. I'm really excited. <laughs> so let's get started with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Arguably, no, not even arguably, it is the most iconic of the whole series. It's the one that everyone knows, it's the first in the series, it's the one with the fawn and the snowy wood and the wardrobe and all the good things. And I'm really excited, so let's go. Chapter 1. 
Lucy looks into a wardrobe. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. I'm on chapter 10, page 108. I love Father Christmas. I love that he is in this book. Like, I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what J.R.R. Tolkien says. This scene just brings me so much joy. <laughs> I love it. Reading this book while listening to the movie soundtrack. 10 out of 10, I recommend. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Hello friends and welcome to Wednesday. It is officially Today is a week until my birthday, and I finished the first book of this challenge. I finished The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I decided to switch from the paperbacks to these hardcovers. These are my Pixie Dust hardcovers because I wanted to kind of annotate and underline things um, in these editions, and I had done it before, but I wanted to do it again and maybe do more and kind of see what I had underlined the first time, which was not very much, <laughs> it turns out. So it's a lot more annotated now than it was before. <sighs> I love this book. It is just magical. It just feels like childhood captured in a book. There's both the first part, which is kind of like the magic of discovering this new world, and then the second part, which is kind of like the adventure of saving this new world and I just feel like it's the quintessential middle grade fantasy adventure. I mean it kind of, I feel like kind of kicked off that genre of like middle grade portal fantasy adventures and it just means the world to me. I think the part that means the most to me out of this book will always be chapters 14 and 15. Um, the Triumph of the Witch and Deeper Magic from Before the Dawn of Time they make me cry every time and I cried this time a little bit. It wasn't as much as last time but I did tear up a little bit and uh, I loved it. I listened to the movie soundtrack while I was reading that part and it just completed the whole experience. Highly recommend listening to the movie soundtrack while you read this. Um, but I think my favorite part from this time around that kind of surprised me, I didn't expect, was the part with Father Christmas. I mean I always love that part because I love Christmas, but I think this time it kind of, I don't know, it just struck me. I was just smiling the whole time. It's so wholesome and fun and just like, it's so cute and like he pulls out the full tea service for them and CS was like, I don't know where he found it, but he did. <laughs> I just think it's great. I loved it so much. So this book was my favorite of the series when I was growing up. It's not quite top of the list for me anymore um, as I've gotten older, but I still just love it so, so much. So that's book one down and the next one in publication order is this one Prince Caspian which is not was not my favorite the last time I read through the series but I am I started it this morning I'm about 40 pages in and Trumpkin has just come out of the scene and what I find so fascinating about the book Prince Caspian versus the movie this is one of very few instances where I think I prefer the movie I know it's wild especially because there's the movie is so controversial with so many fans of the series um but i love the prince caspian movie i grew up on the prince caspian movie and that probably has something to do with it i think the nostalgia definitely is a factor in that but what i love about the movie that we don't get in the book i think the movie added some stuff that we don't get in here but also i love that it kind of shows caspian's story simultaneously with what the pevensies are dealing with whereas in this one we're with the pevensies for the first six chapters and then trumpkin tells caspian's story rather than us seeing it happen live like we're we're seeing it through what trumpkin knows of what Caspian went through and I feel like it's so much more impactful in the film when you see what Caspian's dealing with as he's dealing with it like we're there it's like a simultaneous they're running together kind of a thing and I like that they changed that bit of when Caspian blew the horn when the Pevensies actually get there like I think it it, it just it, 
it's a lot more impactful, it's a lot more suspenseful, and there's a lot more adventure going on in the movie, I feel like, than in here. Whereas in here, most of the adventures already happened before they actually call them. Which I still, I mean, I still love it, don't get me wrong, I do. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna read some more of this and then edit a video, and then I'll check back in with you. Yeah. Chapter 1. The Island. Once there were four children, whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, and it has been told in another book called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe how they had a remarkable adventure. So every Narnian talking animal is obviously an icon. We've got Reba Cheap, of course. Um, but I don't know how I've never noticed this list of names because these are some of the most adorable names I've ever heard. Clodsley Shovel the Mole and Hogglestock the Hedgehog. Is that not the cutest name for a hedgehog you've ever heard in your life? I love it so much! <laughs> and just like that, Prince Caspian is done. Um, this was good. I love it because it's Narnia and it's a Narnian adventure, but it's not my favorite in the series. It's not the best one in the series either. I feel like about this much of the book is just the Pevensies walking, and then this much of the book is things actually happening. <laughs> the Pevensies walking and Caspian's backstory. I will give it that, but this much is things actually getting done. And, um, yeah. So if you're in the mood for a road trip, I've just, I described this once as I feel like Prince Caspian is the Deathly Hallows of Narnia, where in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the first half of the book is just Harry, Ron, and Hermione, like, traveling from one place to another. And that's really what the beginning of this book feels like. Um, obviously a lot of lessons and things go down while that's going on for these guys, but yeah, ultimately it's not my favorite, and that's okay. I still love it. Caspian is one of my favorite Narnian characters ever. This book introduces a lot of really iconic Narnian characters, Trumpkin, Reba Cheep, and then obviously some iconically evil characters as well, like Miraz and Nickabrick. Like I said earlier, I think this is one book where I prefer the movie, and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> The movie was really controversial when it came out because it's a lot darker than the Lion movie, but kind of that's the point of the book. Like, the book is about Pevensies who have lived a full life and are now stuck in young bodies, and them having to kind of come to terms with what it means to be kings and queens now that they are children, and like how to respond to things and how to deal in a world where they've lived basically a full life and now are back at the beginning of it again. And I think that is such an interesting thing that the book explores and I think they did a really good job exploring that in the movie. And also I just, like I said before, I really love how they had Caspian and the Pevensey stories kind of running parallel in the movie, whereas this it's a little bit, the time shift is different. So while this is not the best book in the series, we go into what is but considered by many to be the best book in the series and is definitely just objectively one of the best Voyage of the Dawn Treader. So I'm really excited. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start this tonight. It's about 7 p.m. but I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started so that way maybe tomorrow I'll be a little bit ahead of the curve um, as far as reading is concerned. So hopefully I can get like 50 or so pages into this tonight. Let's go sailing. Let's go on a seafaring adventure. Yay! Chapter 1. The Picture in the Bedroom. There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. This time around, I've been annotating um, these pixie dust versions. I mentioned that earlier, but um, <laughs> from last time I annotated it, you can see I underlined the first line and I wrote iconic. 
because honestly, is there a more iconic first line in any book ever? I feel like no. Hi, I know I look like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> it was a good day though still really long but it was good i was up this morning at 8 15 which if you know me is very early for me since hope's surgery i've been on the night shift so i'm usually up really late with her um because i basically make her tea and then i sit up with her and we watch murder she wrote until she falls asleep uh and some nights that's later than others my sleep schedule is trash right now <laughs> and this morning was really early for me but we went to disney springs this morning we being the disney mom and myself we went to disney springs because today was the launch day for the new vera bradley and disney collection bonjour bell that's what it's called and it's a beauty and the beast inspired collection and it's the first princess collection that they've done and i love it I got two things. First thing I got was this bag. It's beautiful. This is the Vera tote in this collection and it's this gorgeous like navy blue velvet and it's super soft and pretty and plushy and obviously it's got this gorgeous bell outline on it and then inside it all the inside patterns are all this like rose and magic mirror pattern. I got the blanket and I'm so excited and it just came out of the dryer so it's like super snuggly. So this is kind of what the pattern looks like on most of the bags except on most of the bags the other characters are also there but the blanket just has Mrs. Potts and Chip. I think you can see them. Yeah so I knew I wanted to have this the minute I saw it I was like I need it and it's Mrs. Potts and Chip and they're in a bunch of different poses and stuff but where's the one? Oh, this is my favorite one. Because look, Chip is on a little stack of books. So I adore Vera Bradley blankets. I have several and uh, this will be going on my bed tonight because like I said, just came out of the dryer. So it's super warm and snuggly and fluffy and I love it. So I'm going to get snuggled up and read some Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I don't think I'm going to finish it tonight because I'm so tired. <laughs> so I'll probably finish it up tomorrow. Also today we went over to Universal, which fun fact about both Hope and I, we've lived in the Central Florida area our entire lives and we've never once been to Universal. But we went over to Universal to one of the resorts because um, Robin from Oh Hello Robin, our lovely and wonderful friend, is here with her husband Rod and her son Jacob and they're visiting. They had the afternoon free and so we popped over there and spent some time with them and honestly, when I say that the Disney YouTube community is the best community on YouTube, I'm not kidding. It is the best, best place and I'm so blessed and thankful for the friends that we have made since we've had this channel and Robin is one of the best. Um, we've met up with her several times and obviously we collab a lot. Um, she and Hope do a lot of planner collabs and those will be coming back in the future, don't you worry. As much as I love meeting up with Disney YouTube friends in the parks and doing rides and shows or hunts or whatever we do um, and there's that's always so magical and fun there's something so much more special about when we just meet up and we just hang out. We just got f some food and we sat and we talked for like two and a half hours and it was just the best thing ever because it's just like, it's the genuine friendship that just fills my heart so full and I just love getting to do that. So if you guys are not subscribed to Robin, you need to be. I'll link her channel down below and also her Etsy shop. She just opened an Etsy sticker shop and her first fall launch is live and her uh, Halloween launch will be coming very soon um, so you need to go check those out they're gorgeous stickers she's amazing go check them out if you like our content I think you're gonna like Robin's as well and uh, yes yeah, so if you're not already subscribed to her go follow the link in the description and go check her out because she's awesome so okay I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna get to reading and I will check in with you guys later hello friends 
it's Saturday night. <laughs> so it's been a busy couple of days and I actually have yet to finish the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which feels crazy because this is not normally one that takes me a lot of time. So I think it's just been that crazy and I haven't really taken the time to sit down and read. I'm behind schedule, which always happens with reading vlogs, reading weeks. Anytime I try to schedule my reading, it never goes well. Um, but I think I can definitely finish this one tonight. I'm on chapter 12, The Dark Island, and it shouldn't be too hard to knock this out tonight and probably start The Silver Chair tonight as well, um, just to kind of get, try to get back on schedule a little bit. So I have my pumpkin spice hot cocoa because that's my current favorite hot drink of choice. So I'm gonna drink this, finish my book, I'll check back in with you when we're done. And just like that, we are done. I think what's interesting about Dawn Treader versus any of the other Narnia books is that this one doesn't really have like an overarching plot. It's just like little adventures on each island as they sail east, but it's not like there's a, an overarching plot line. The, the real like thing that keeps them going is just the idea of getting to the end of the world, but there's not really a particular foe to fight or anything. It's just like little adventures on each island they come across and yet it still carries the same amount of fun and adventure that the first two books do even though there's not like as as classic of an adventure storyline as the other two have if that makes sense. My favorite part about this I think is probably Eustace's character arc. It's one of the most iconic character arcs in all of fiction, I think. So I'm really excited that Silverchair is next and we get to spend a little more time with Eustace. But yeah, I really love this one. It is, I think, pretty widely regarded as one of the best in the series, and I totally understand why. Plus it just makes me want to go on like a seafaring adventure, which I would probably not do any good at being a part of a seafaring adventure, but like this book makes me want to. <laughs> so now we move on. To the silver chair. This is one where I think I will always prefer the pixie dust cover because the original hardback cover, yikes. Don't like it. Don't like it. I'd much rather look at the door in the wall. <laughs> Chapter one, behind the gym. It was a dull autumn day, and Jill Pohl was crying behind the gym. Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. Last night, I made it through 100 pages of The Silver Chair, which, fun fact, is almost halfway. This book's only like 250 pages, which I thought it was longer for some reason. I guess it just felt longer every other time I've read it. We're at Castle Harfang. We're gonna see what happens with the giants. Well, I know what happens with the giants, but if you've never read this book, you don't know what happens with the giants, but I'll check in with you when I finish this bad boy. And just like that, the silver chair is done. I loved it so much and I'm so glad. This historically has been my least favorite of the series and I understand why this one is so different from any of the other books so far in the series. And it's really fascinating to read it coming off of the first three that are like the Pevensey trilogy is kind of what I refer to them as in my head, where this one is so vastly different because it's based around Eustace and Jill who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing here. They haven't read the right sort of books. They don't know adventures and how these things are supposed to work. Eustace has a tiny bit of experience with it from his time in Voyage, but he doesn't know how a fantasy adventure is supposed to work. He doesn't really know that you're not supposed to trust the giants and that you shouldn't be aware when you're being enchanted and that kind of stuff. He doesn't know these things because he never read fairy tales as a kid. So he knows Aslan, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> and all of the time that he spent in Narnia was spent on the John Treader, which actually is pointed out in here, that all the time he spent in Narnia, he wasn't in Narnia. He was in the Lone Islands. And I just think it's fascinating that he's having to discover this new part of this world that he spent a little bit of time in, but not as much as others. Um, but he's the more experienced adventurer, which feels wild. Also, what I find so interesting about this one is every other book in the series starts out with characters who are already connected. They're already friends or they're siblings who kind of in Lion have to get 
to work together but in Prince Caspian they're already a well-oiled machine and like they're a, a tight-knit group of siblings where in this one Eustace and Jill aren't friends if anything they're they're acquaintances at best they're enemies at worst because it's kind of shown that Jill is being bullied and implied that Eustace used to be one of those bullies before his adventure in Voyage so they they don't like each other <laughs> They don't like each other at all, so there's a lot of bickering and a lot of snapping and a lot of um, blaming one another as they go on this adventure, and it just gives such a different feel to it than, like, all of the other books in the series where the main kids kind of pull together to make things happen. These two don't know how to work together, and I think it's such a fascinating dynamic. Plus, they get the addition of Puddleglum, who obviously is an iconic Narnian character, um, but he's not the most helpful with team spirit. And I also want to say one more thing. Um, I know that Jadis, the White Witch, she's bad. She's real bad. But I honestly think the Lady of the Green Kirtle is even scarier. So that is the Silver Chair Down. We are more than halfway through the series. Next up is The Horse and His Boy, which I'm really excited because this story, the story of um, Kor and Erebus and Arkenland and Kor and Thunderfist, they're all mentioned in the silver chair that like they're telling these old tales of of Arkenland's history and that's what this book is. Oh, I'm so excited. I love this book so much. Chapter 1. How Shasta set out on his travels. This is the story of an adventure that happened in Narnia and Kalorman and the lands between in the golden age when Peter was high king in Narnia and his brother and his two sisters were king and queens under him. Hello friends, happy Tuesday. It is officially I think the last day of this reading Narnia leading up to my birthday because my birthday is tomorrow. And I have two books left to go, so you and I, mostly me, have a lot of reading to do today. But last night I finished The Horse and His Boy. I just adore this story. I can definitely see where it is in some ways a product of its time as far as descriptions of certain things go. It's about Shasta and Erebus. He's a runaway slave. She is a runaway lord's daughter and they kind of team up to get these talking horses and themselves back to Narnia. And honestly, if you need to know me in any fictional characters, like you want me described in fictional characters, it's Shasta from this book and Diggory from The Magician's Nephew, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but Shasta is so relatable. The poor boy just wants to do his thing and not fight people and eat food and sleep. <laughs> and I love that for him. So this was excellent, as always. Next up is my favorite book of all time. I read, I think, about 50 pages last night after I finished Horse and His Boy. I just wanted to get a head start for today. Like I said before, Shasta and Diggory are like the two that are the most like me. When I was a kid, I wanted so desperately to be Lucy Pevensey, and then I ended up as Diggory Kirk and, uh, and Shasta. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna get into this one. We're gonna try to finish this and the last battle today. My emotions are not gonna be able to take this. I'm gonna see Narnia be born and die in the same day. Am I ready for this? Chapter 1. The Wrong Door This is a story about something that happened long ago when your grandfather was a child. It is a very important story because it shows how all the comings and goings between our own world and the land of Narnia first began. Just like that, we are done. I'm a little emotional. <laughs> I spent this read through trying to figure out, trying to put my finger on why this book, why of all the books I've read, of all the books in this series, why is this like my book? What it, What is it about this one that made it like my favorite book of all time? And uh, I honestly still don't know. I think every reader, or at least I hope this is true for you, um, has that one book that 
It's not the best book ever written and you can acknowledge that, but there's something about it that just gets into your heart and just like burrows down in there. And you're not even entirely sure why, but something about it just when you open it, it feels like home and it feels like a hug and like you just want to live there forever <laughs> in that feeling that you get when you read it. And that's this one for me. That's this book. So this book came out several years after The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe came out, and it's really written to explain some of the more quirky things about Lion. For example, the lamppost, how it got to Narnia. Jadis, the White Witch, how she got to Narnia. It's just chock full of delightful little things that you wouldn't catch if you hadn't read Lion first. So, so far, my hypothesis from the beginning of this experiment seems to be holding true. I think it's definitely a better idea to start, to read Lion before you read this one. I think you'll catch so much more as much as this is, like I said, the book of my heart and I recommend it to everyone. I think um, there's definitely some things that you may not catch if you haven't read Lion first. Um, but then you might catch if you read Lion next and be like, oh, that's fun. I, I saw that come to life or whatever. But uh, I think it definitely is, is more of a, a backstory type story. Anyway, from the birth of Narnia, now we're on to the death of Narnia. I'm not. I don't think I'm ready for this, okay? I don't think I'm ready for this. So we're leaving Diggory and Polly. We're going back to Eustace and Jill. <sighs> Time for the last battle. Here we go. <laughs> Chapter One by Cauldron Pool. In the last days of Narnia, far up to the west beyond Lantern Waste and close beside the Greek waterfall, there lived an ape. I forgot that the bad part of going straight from Magician's Nephew to this is that we go straight from Uncle Andrew to Shift. And those two are definitely my least favorite Narnia characters. <laughs> Hands down, I hate these guys. Hi friends, it's Friday, it's October 1st, and it's time to wrap up my week of Narnia reading. First, I'm gonna talk about The Last Battle. Oh my gosh, this book just destroys me every time. The ending will make me sob every single time. Happy tears. Well, sad tears too. Just a lot of feelings, just a lot of emotions. I finished up this one on Tuesday night, and then Wednesday, which was my birthday, was spent just, it was a really nice day. We just chilled at home, and Hope and I watched all three of the Narnia movies back to back to back, uh, which is my favorite way to watch them, just to binge them. And honestly, I think it's what I needed after finishing this the night before. <laughs> like it was nice to finish the books and have those done and then still get to go watch the movies and have a little bit more of the nostalgia of the first three books. So that was fun. As far as my hypothesis goes, I think what I originally thought is true. I think publication order is the way to go if you've never read the books before. I think the one exception you might could make is moving A Horse and His Boy up to between Lion and Prince Caspian, which is the place it normally sits in the chronological order, um, because the Horse and His Boy story takes place during the last chapter of The Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe. So you could slot that in there if you wanted to, but ultimately I think publication order is probably the way to go if it's the first time you're reading them. I think it flows really nicely and the stories all connect and honestly reading them in a week was really fun because I noticed so many more like little easter eggs and mentions of things that happened in previous books or were going to happen in books to come and it was really fun. And that brings an end to my week of reading Narnia for my birthday, which honestly was an A plus decision. If you're not sure what you should do to celebrate your birthday, may I recommend reading your favorite books again? Because honestly, this was the best way to start out a new year of life. Like I am so ready to take on whatever this next year has in store for me, partially because I spent the week with my childhood faves. I hope that you enjoyed spending this week in Narnia with me. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read the books, which one is your favorite, um, if you've seen the movies, which one is your favorite, and if you're planning to read the series, 
let me know down below. Obviously, I think they're great. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below for more Disney and bookish magic, and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any time we upload. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!